Hello everyone, it's Inka. As most of you know, I've been doing a lot of these 24 hour frames where I cook along the same theme for an entire day. But this time I wanted to do a different spin on it as some of you have suggested, where I will be only making foods from a different culture. To start us off in this video, I will only be making Korean foods for 24 hours. Korean food is probably one of my most favorite cuisines in the world. There's still a lot of dishes that I really enjoy that I haven't gone around to making. I thought I would just follow recipes from a specific book, not just by anyone, but by the amazing Meng Chi herself. As you can probably tell, I have already read through this entire book. Meng Chi really has been such an incredible influence on my culinary journey, so I just felt like it just felt right. I will be making some of Meng Chi's most popular or favorite recipes and learning a lot along the way as well. First things first, I'm gonna go do some quick grocery shopping. hasn't really opened up yet. My idea is to make a more traditional version of Korean breakfast today, which usually involves rice, a stew, and a bunch of side dishes. I'll be making several things, which is again why I need to be starting early. I already have the first one going on in the background. My rice is there. Because I usually see multi-grain rice featured in Mang Chi's videos, I have gone ahead and added some purple rice to my short grain rice. And then for the featured stew of the morning, I have decided to go with the soybean paste stew. I feel like usually when we think of Korean cuisine, the first stew that comes to mind is like kimchi jjigae, kimchi stew. Mang Chi herself actually said in her book here, soybean paste stew to her is one of Korea's national dishes. It has been a cornerstone of Korean cuisine for centuries. So I just felt like that was the stew I should be going with. And this is the soybean paste I'll be using today. Also, I bought an earthenware pot. I've always wanted one of these. I know this is how they serve it at like Korean restaurants, but what's really cool about these pots is that they retain their heat really well. I'll be using this to make my soybean paste stew. Here's what I have for ingredients. Zucchini, potatoes, garlic, onion, scallions, jalapeno, firm tofu right here. The recipe explicitly says medium firm, so I'm going with this. And of course, I have my soybean paste here, some gochujang, which is hot pepper paste. I specifically bought the hot spicy one. Last thing would be this beef brisket. First thing I'm gonna do is actually go ahead and heat up my earthenware bowl over the stove top. Over here, I'm going to start slicing up my beef and my garlic. I believe this is mainly to give the stock a little bit of that like beef fat and like beef flavor. Dice up my garlic as well. Now I'm going to go back over and fry this up. Adding in my garlic, my beef. She wasn't kidding when she said this earthenware bowl gets real hot because it definitely does. Add in my water, let it cook for a little bit. So now while I'm waiting for my beef and garlic to cook, I'm gonna chop up my vegetables real quick here so then I can just toss them in once that's done. And I'm realizing there's like quite a lot of vegetable. So I looked at the recipe again, realized this recipe serves four people. So <laughs> eating Korean foods for a whole week, why not? Add my vegetables in. We're also going to add in the two paste. This is the beautiful soybean paste. It looks a lot like miso, which makes sense since they're both made out of soybean. Red pepper paste. This is the staple of Korean cuisine. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this and the gochujang. I'll close this and let it cook for a while again. So while the stew is cooking in the background, I am going to get started working on so my side dishes, which is also known as banchan, and it actually has its own chapter here in Mang Chi's recipe book. People make like, <laughs> This is what happens when I try to multitask. I'm going to do around two or three. And the first one I'm gonna do is stir fried dried anchovies. I have some pan fried anchovies here. So I know this might be a little bit intimidating for people, but 
You are supposed to eat the entire fish, something I'm familiar with in just like Chinese cuisine. I'm just gonna try one. Super umami. You know how when you have like meat jerky, the texture is chewier and like there's just so much flavor like concentrated in that one bite? That's pretty much what's going on. I'm using a measuring cup since that's what Monchi usually does as well. Red pepper paste, soy sauce, sugar, water, lots of garlic, which I really like. I'm gonna mix it together. Really digging this consistency. I'm gonna taste it. It's like sweet and spicy. Ooh, it's, oh, it's spicy. I like it. I'm just gonna go ahead and cook up the sauce so I can combine the two together. To keep the anchovies crispy, I don't actually wanna cook them for too long, so I'm just gonna really quickly coat them. In there, I'm gonna pour this now back in the bowl. Look at that. You can definitely smell the anchovy, but also like the spice of the red pepper paste. The overwhelming scent is still like sweet. Last two steps is to add in a bit of sesame oil and sesame seed, and that's it. One side dish done. Next thing I'm gonna make are rolled omelets. Probably one of my favorite ways to enjoy eating eggs. Today I'll be making the Korean version or uh, Manchi's version specifically. I already have my vegetables cut up here. Red pepper, green bell pepper, and onion. Crack my eggs real quick. I'm trying to work really fast here. Also adding in a little bit of white pepper and some salt. It really does already look very colorful. And that's done. I have my egg mixture. Now I'm just going to fry it up over the heat and roll it up. Adding in the last of the tofu, scallions, and jalapeno here. Now I'm just gonna let this cook a little bit more until the tofu is soft. My side dishes are ready, so I'm gonna plate that up. And then I am finally ready to enjoy this huge breakfast. I say breakfast, but this honestly feels more like a lunch or dinner. It just feels so well balanced already. Watching this bubbling over the stove top was incredible. There's like so much vegetable and meat packed into this and tofu. Who wouldn't feel ready for the day? The flavor really does remind me a lot of miso soup because of the soybean paste base, but this one feels even richer. The texture of it is a little thicker. It's just very comforting. So this is my multi-grain rice. God, this is so good. I feel like I should also talk a little bit about my side dishes here. Usually for side dishes, people make this ahead of time. So I have the stir-fried anchovies. Super flavorful. With each bite of this, I can eat like half a bowl of rice. That's why you only serve like a small amount. I also have some kimchi because as Manchi said, kimchi, rice, and stew is kind of the iconic combination. This kimchi is actually from one of my favorite restaurants here in New York City. Mm. You can hear the crunch. And then my rolled omelets actually turned out pretty great. It really does look like jeweled pieces. It is also a lot more softer than the rolled omelets I'm used to. I really like how crunchy the vegetables are still. I also have some seaweed here. This one I think is flavored with perilla seed oil. A lot of these dishes, they're all like things that each family has a different way of making. I also have some burdock tea here. I really wanted to try it, so. Also, the benefit of using an earthenware bowl is that even now you can see the steam is still coming up. Not sure when I'll get to lunch yet because I feel like breakfast is gonna fill me up really well, but we'll get to that eventually. This is truly though, one of the most rewarding experiences. What a great breakfast. I am back in the kitchen. I was thinking that for lunch, I wanted to make some jajangmyeon. I would say I'm fairly familiar with jajangmyeon in like Chinese culture, but I love the Korean version. According to what she wrote here, jajangmyeon is a Koreanized version of a noodle dish created by Chinese immigrants in Incheon in 1905. It's been like over a hundred years. I have had it on multiple occasions. Every time I see it in movies or dramas or shows, it just makes me super hungry. Anyways, these are all the reasons why I want to make jajangmyeon today. And specifically, the one in this recipe book is chengban jajangmyeon. Chengban means tray. It's also supposedly the more like deluxe version. Gosh, just looking at this is making me super hungry. So there's actually quite a few things. I have some scallions over here, a zucchini, onions, potatoes some seafood, some cabbage, some pork belly, and of course, the black bean paste. Most important ingredient. Just to show you guys what it looks like. Gosh. From what Manchi says in her book, it's actually made with a mixture of soybeans, flour, and caramel, and then fermented. This is what gives it that like classic 
black color has like a slightly sweet and salty, earthy taste. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is actually fry up my oil. We're gonna make some scallion oil. It adds so much flavor to whatever dish you're making. Just gonna fry them until they're crisp and brown. This is what the scallions look like right now. I'm just taking these scallions out. I'm gonna take two tablespoons fulls out. With the remaining oil, what I'm gonna do now is actually fry this black bean paste. And the reason we're doing that is because that helps get rid of the bitter taste of the bean paste. I'm gonna take a guess here and assume that the words mean the same thing because zha jiang in Chinese literally means fry the sauce. Trying to get it to a slightly thinner consistency. Also, it's starting to smell really good again. I'm gonna set this aside. So now that the base of the sauce is ready, I'm gonna start cutting up my other ingredients, starting with the pork belly. I'm just going to chop them up into bite-sized pieces. While I'm here, I'm also really quickly gonna chop up my vegetables, so my zucchini, onions, potatoes. I'm gonna go back to the stove top and actually start making the sauce. The oil back in here. Add the pork belly. Just waiting for it to crisp up. It's gonna take a while. Pretty golden brown right now. It's like crispy. I gotta find a place to pop this book. When the surface turns golden brown and crunchy, pretty crunchy looking. I'm gonna go ahead and add in our vegetables. Hold on, it's getting real smoky in here. I'm gonna go ahead and add in my black bean sauce. Also the seafood, sugar. It's really starting to take on that color. I don't feel like I'm home. I feel like I'm really at a restaurant. Water. Now I'm just going to cover it up, cook it for seven to eight minutes. So I'm gonna set my timer. And in the meantime, I think I can get started on the noodles before it's too late. So these are the noodles I bought. It says jajang right here. Finally putting my Korean language skills to good use. Essentially, I just wanted to find thicker, chewy noodles. It says in the book that it's helpful for us to take this out and then coil them. So I'm doing that right now. I'm gonna make some for my roommate too. There's like a lot. I'm gonna go ahead and put these in the boiling water. Having them a good rinse. I mean, with noodles a lot, I know that this really helps with like the texture. Check on the sauce. I feel like I don't even have to adjust the seasoning. It's already like just right. I'm gonna add in the potato starch slurry. It is definitely becoming thicker. Coat to the back of my spoon now. Add in the noodles. There's so much. Also a little bit of sesame oil. You guys, I, oh my goodness. Oh, look at that. Oh my God. I'm gonna go and plate this up. Eat this before the noodles get soggy. Let's go. It smells and looks just like something I would buy outside, but like even nicer, you know, bits of pork belly like this. I'm gonna eat before saying anything else. Oh my God, I'm so happy right now. I feel like the scallion oil really does make a difference. You realize that there are a lot more steps to it than you would think. Thick noodles really are the way to go. You see this like, bounce to it. I also just love how the sauce really clings to the noodles so perfectly. You really get a balance of flavors in every single bite. The mouthfeel I feel like is very pleasant. And also I really like how much vegetable they put in here. For drinks, I'm just pairing it with this grape juice. Boom, boom. There's like little grape bits in it, which is why I love it. But it was just introduced to me as one of those drinks that like I think kids really like. Very sweet and slightly sparkling. I know they also usually serve pickled radishes on the side and a little bit of black bean sauce. I don't have that today. Not complaining though, because I can still finish all this, no problem. Some more prep to do for dinner, but in the meantime, I'm gonna enjoy this beautiful plate of jajang mm. All right, I have officially made it to Friday evening. Use this time to really have a great meal, a meal that can help me relax, maybe drink a little bit. And the first thing that comes to mind is fried chicken, which coincidentally happens to be one of the most popular meals in Korea. Also actually one of Mangchi's most popular recipes. So for dinner, I'll be having Korean fried chicken. Fried chicken apparently became really popular since the 1970s. What's really cool about it too is that there are different variations and different ways that people make it. I remember this one I really liked. They actually put like little bits of hopped rice in the coating of the chickens. Mangchi's version is apparently a little more sweet and a little bit tangy. 
with a hint of spice. The first thing I have to do is make sure the chicken is seasoned and it has that beautiful coating. I have some sweet potato starch, black pepper, chicken wings here. I also have some salt, which I'll now use to season my wings. Just gonna mix it together. So there's not too much seasoning going on in here. It's straight up just salt and pepper, but that's because so much of the flavor comes from the eventual sauce that we're gonna coat it in. So I'm not too worried right now. So the next thing that's written in the recipe here is to actually grab a Ziploc bag and add my potato starch. This is to make sure that the chicken wings are coated evenly. Flipping the bag over and back again until the chicken is well coated. This is actually working super well. Honestly, I'm doing this from now on. This is so efficient and we're gonna give them a nice oil bath. Basically just waiting until they get crunchy. We're gonna double fry these. I'm also gonna put down the camera because deep frying and holding a camera at the same time is not a smart idea. Color is now like a light golden brown. This kind of texture comes from the potato starch. I'm gonna keep on doing it in batches and finish up the rest of my chicken here. It's already been almost an hour. Took a while. They are fried and crispy, but now I am going to double fry them because this will give them like that signature really crispy coating. Double frying. my chicken. They're still bubbling and they're so very hot. So I'm gonna put this down. One more thing that I have to fry up is actually peanuts. And that's about it. Now I'm gonna move on to making the sauce coating. It's a mixture of rice syrup, soy sauce, brown sugar, white vinegar, and mustard. Add a good mix. Versus buying fried chicken outside, this is definitely taking a lot more time. I'm fry up some garlic and ginger. Also my chili peppers. Smells incredible in here right now. Gonna let it thicken a little bit and then I think I'll be able to add my chicken. I think we're pretty much there. Okay, and the peanuts. Now I'm gonna give it a good toss. There we go. Even as I'm tossing this, I'm getting like really excited. I know I got like really tired from all the frying, but now I feel like rejuvenated. Definitely getting stickier though. So I'm gonna sprinkle on some sesame seeds. Look at that. I cannot wait to eat dinner. Whew. I don't think I realized how warm it got in the kitchen until now, look at this chicken. Wow. I also have some pickled daikon. I followed Mangchi's recipe for this. I feel like it really helps kind of reset my palate. Also, I feel like I can't have Korean fried chicken without having beer. So my friends taught me about this, where this iconic combination of chicken and beer is known as chi mek. Chi is literally stands for chicken, mek stands for beer. They have to go hand in hand. It's like peanut butter and jam. Gosh, first of all, it is definitely crispy. At the same time, the skin has been drenched in that sauce. Truly, you do not need any extra seasoning because this, this sauce packs a punch. You definitely get the sweetness from like the syrup and the sugar, but it's balanced out, I think, by like the, the tangy elements we put in there. You do get that kick from like, you know, the chili flakes. The meat is still tender. Oh, that's good. Hold on. I just realized I bought the wrong drink. <laughs> this is actually alcohol free. I was like, this tastes so good and it doesn't taste alcoholic. It's because there's, there's no alcoholic content in it. It's fine. I have my fake beer, I guess. Take a bite of the daikon. Crunchy, refreshing. I feel like they really figured out like the perfect balance of flavors and textures where the side dish usually helps you continue eating the main dish. This is one of the best Friday dinners I've had in a long time. This is really great. No wonder this is Mung Chi's most popular recipe. It totally deserves that title. So I'm gonna rest a little bit now. I'm gonna finish up, then I will get back to cooking. I wanna get a head start on dessert, which according to the recipe, takes a couple hours before it's going to be done. What I have in mind is the kwabeki. 
which looks like this. So essentially it's twisted donuts. It's a very popular after school snack and it's usually enjoyed like hot and fresh from the pan. But I do think what's most iconic about it is that beautiful twist it has. So that's gonna be my challenge. In terms of ingredients, it's pretty straightforward. You only need a few items, flour, butter, an egg, some active dry yeast, some milk. You also need some cinnamon and some sugar and salt and oil for frying, but that's about it. I'm gonna start by making the yeast mixture. Throw my butter in here. Butter may have melted super quickly, and I'm now gonna add in my milk, some sugar. Combine that yeast. I'm just gonna give this some time to activate. Not used to having a book right here, but it's actually quite nice. I'm gonna go ahead and add in some salt. And then because it specifically says in the recipe to use a wooden spoon to mix it, she loves her wooden spoons. I'm gonna use a wooden spoon to stir this together. It has now been combined. Am I close enough to use my hands? This is the best way for me to tell whether my dough is ready or not. It's also really interesting for me to see how different cultures have different ways of making fried dough. Kneading dough, however, is universal. Comparatively smooth. So now I'm gonna rest it on the counter for one to one and a half hours. This is why I had to start early. Look at this dough. It's huge right now. All I'm gonna do is deflate it and just knead it a little bit more. It's a lot smoother now. So I'm gonna knead it for a little bit more and then we're gonna let it rest for another hour. Lots of time for it to relax. Another risen dough. Actually like a pillow. It feels so light. I do have to knead this one more time. This is truly the hardest I've had to work for dessert. So there's actually enough here to make 16. I'm gonna divide them up that way. I'm gonna take a ball of dough and roll it out into a longer rope. I'm rolling up with one hand and rolling down with the other. So then when I pick it up, it kind of, you see how it kind of did that little twist thing by itself? So that's what we're aiming for. And now I have the signature twisted donut rolled together like this. Let it proof for 30 minutes. It's the last, last step, last leg. Let's do it. Finally, my dessert is done. Hot right out of the pan. My fingers are actually burning a little bit. It smells like a churl almost, I wanna say. I think it's just because of the cinnamon sugar. It's like a sizable amount, I mean, Oh yeah, this is the consistency we're looking at. Wait, this is so good. It's so fluffy and like just crunchy enough on the outside. Also when they're like warm out of the pan, it is so comforting. Like it's such a comforting feeling. I mean, cinnamon and sugar, who wouldn't like that? I do not regret a single second I spent making this. So I may have finished that donut already in just a few bites. Really good thing I made. Four. But yeah, that pretty much sums up my 24 hours today. I feel like I made quite a good amount of food today. Realizing just how much time it takes to prep all of this stuff. But yeah, even though it is pretty late now and I'm like kind of exhausted, this was actually really enjoyable. I love being able to try out different recipes from different places in the world. So I'm excited to do more of these and move on to the next recipe book. If you have a recommendation, let me know. But until then, I'm gonna clean up and I'll see you next time. Bye.